So I have my whole piece primed and I'm ready to fit the doors. And I made these doors just about right to fit top to bottom. They're oversized by about an eighth of an inch side to side. So I'm going to take it to my table saw and rip about a 32nd off top and bottom and about a 16th off either side and then check the fit. So my face frames are pretty square except for this one corner and you can see how the door fits in the whole frame except for where we're at a square in this one corner. So instead of keeping um, ripping it on the table saw straight lines I'm going to take my hand plane and plane right from where the gap closes to where it doesn't fit on my cat on the door. So after planing down that side, you can see that the reveal around the cabinet is pretty symmetrical, except for this bottom corner where it's just ever so slightly at a square. So in order to make this gap more even, once again I'm going to mark right where it starts to go out and then plane a little bit of this cabinet down to make this a consistent gap. So once you plane that down, you can see that now I have a fairly consistent reveal along the entire perimeter. And um, the hinges I'm using have minor adjustments you can make to the door itself, so this is good enough for now. It's held in place with these card stacks I made. Four cards is a perfect sixteenth of an inch, and right now I'm using two, which is going to be two thirty seconds. So I have a 2 30 seconds reveal around the entire door. Before I dismantle it, I marked two and a half inches up from the bottom and two and a half inches down from the top on the face frame and the door. And those will be the marks for where I'm mounting my hinges. I transferred that two and a half inch mark to the back side of my panel. And I'm using this jig that came with the Fossner bit I bought for drilling out these hinge holes to mark on my panel the three holes for my drill press. And then I'll use a nail set to mark my hole from where the Fossner bit will go. So I have the Fossner bit mounted in my drill press and I have the depth gauge set so it only will drill a half an inch into the panel. And then I'm ready. So after my holes are drilled, you're ready to install one half of the hinge into the door. And the holes, the screw holes should match up with the holes you marked with the jig. Now these are a two-part system that will connect together like that. And this part goes on the inside of the cabinet. So the nice thing about this is, is you can detach the door from the cabinet without having to take the hinge apart. Now these hinges are the European Concealed Hinge Full Inset Door. They are an absolute bear to find at the store. Um, maybe they're easy to find wherever you live, but for me they're super hard to find. There's usually only one variety, which is this one, and they're usually out of stock. Um, it's much easier to find full overlay hinges or partial overlay hinges because those doors are typically easier to install. But the designating factor between these and the other ones is, is they have this 90 degree or L-shaped angle on the hinge. 
So these were actually in the wrong bin when I went to the store, which is why I mentioned that. So that makes it so that this, the face of this sits flush with the inside of your cabinet. So to attach these, I'm going to use a Vix bit, which has a little has a little nipple on the end that matches the countersink part of your hinges and it self-centers all your pre-drilled holes. So before I attach this door to my cabinet, I'm going to attach this little wooden knob. These are super sim simple to attach. They come with a screw and a pre-drilled hole in the knob. So I'm just going to drill a hole in my cabinet and attach it. So now I can attach the second half of my hinge to the inside of my cabinet. And what I did was transfer that mark we made on the front of the cabinet onto the inside, which will be the center point of the hinge on the door, as well as marked a vertical line of where this needs to mount through the center of your hinge, like that. Now this mark is designated by the thickness of your doors. So there's actually, you add one and I think they said seven eighths to the thickness of your door to get the measurement from the, your face frame to where you mount this. And I'm going to use that Vix bit and the screws provided with the hinges to mount these. So before I make these holes, I make sure my perpendicular line is, line is running centered through the two mounting holes and the hinge and centered through this hole and this hole on that part of the hinge. So once I have the two parts of my inner hinge attached on the inside of my cabinet, I can just slide these arms onto the hinge. Slide on and underneath this back screw and then check to make sure your door closes. So when you initially put these cabinets into place and you line up the arms, you slide them all the way in and tighten this back screw. That's what's going to hold your cabinet in place. And check your fit. So my door closes pretty well. The reveal's pretty consistent. It's a little inset and I'll probably end up putting a catch or a stopper on the inside of all the doors. But, if you have any major problems, the nice thing about these hinges are is there's four adjust, well, three adjustments. So, if you loosen these two screws and slide your door up and down in those recesses, you'll move your cabinet up and down. So, if the reveal is big on one side or the other, you can adjust these screws up and down. The other one is, is this screw... I don't know if you can see it on the inside of the hinge. This one right here is going to adjust your door left to right. So screwing this in and out, is gonna, you can see the hinge moving, is going to adjust the face of your door in and out. As well as this back screw controls how deep your door is inset in your face frame. So if you loosen these two screws and then adjust your door forward and retighten them, you 
you can adjust how much your door closes into your cabinet. You can already see now it's proud of where it was before. So if I adjust that back slightly, slightly more, then this will be flush with the front. The last thing I'm going to do to the doors before finish painting and spot priming all the my dirty fingerprint marks is I'm going to install a magnetic catch on the bottom of each door and a double roller catch at the top of each door. And this will just keep the door in place. It will make it so it doesn't sit recessed in your face frame and over time it will help keep the door from bowing out or bowing in on either side of the cabinet. This metal plate that comes with that magnetic catch is so large that I don't bother measuring where it's going. I just kind of place it close to the corner of my cabinet. The surface area is so big that even if you're off a little bit it won't affect how it functions. So I just used my drill bit to pre-drill the hole and then hand tighten the screw in place. There's these two little dimples on the magnetic catch so if you push hard enough it won't move when you're screwing it in. To account for the thickness of that metal plate, I'm going to mount the magnetic receiver about a sixteenth of an inch behind where you can see your face frame because the door, the three quarter inch is going to sit in the face frame. Magnetic catch um, on the door is attached, so you just want to have it a little recessed from the front, the back side of your face frame. I'm going to mark the slots with the pencil and then pre-drill those holes. For the double roller catch, I take the catch part and I marked an inch down from the top of my cabinet. I'm going to attach it just like the metal plate on the bottom, right below that inch mark and about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the, ca of the cabinet door. The easiest way to mark where the receiving end of the catch goes is as you are closing the door, mark on your face frame right where the center of that tip is. and then transfer that mark onto the inside of your cabinet. Then you line up the mouth of the catch right on that center line, recessed a little bit back from the edge of your face frame, and mark your holes.